This is a short but super important video on a real world event and how you can protect your business. CIO.com has an interesting article on a major multi-day internet, internet outage that happened in Canada last month. Let's discuss what happened and some of the steps you can take to protect your organization if something similar happens to you. Hi, I'm Steve Burphy. I'm a vice president at ARG. While I work for ARG, this video is my own and does not reflect the views or opinions of my employer. Last month, July of 2022, Canada's Rogers Communications suffered a major internet outage. If you haven't heard of Rogers, they're a substantial provider of internet and wireless services with revenues of about 20 billion US dollars and 26,000 employees. According to CIO.com, which I linked in the description of this video, Rogers suffered an outage due to a packet storm on their network. It wasn't an intentional denial of service attack, though it behaved like one. The event was caused by a software upgrade that accidentally removed all the traffic filters to the internet from their network. Without the filters, the Rogers network gear was quickly overwhelmed and ceased functioning. Rogers serves about 25% of Canada's internet capacity, so this was a big event. Service was not completely restored for several days. So what would you do if your internet service provider was down for days at a time? According to the article, those with SD-WAN and redundant ISPs were generally okay. Generally, but not completely. We'll talk about that in a minute. However, those without redundancy or insufficient redundancy or without an SD-WAN platform to prioritize the traffic on the redundant internet service, those businesses came to a screeching halt. The article stated that many businesses had not invested in diverse internet and had to revert to manual processes to keep their business going. While businesses with alternate internet, ac internet access generally made it through, the ones that also had SD-WAN did not notice the degradation in service. I have an entire video series on SD-WAN. I'll link to that in the show notes. But in general, SD-WAN conducts real-time traffic prioritization by application. So even if your redundant internet is inexpensive broadband, SD-WAN will make sure your most important applications like voice, ERP, and point of sale have the capacity they need, while other less critical applications are limited to what's left over. So SD-WAN for the win in a real-life scenario. SD-WAN has a couple of other key protections. If your SD-WAN provider is a gateway or private middle mile service, your inbound traffic is also protected because inbound packets will be routed over the best available circuit. Also, if you're using an SD-WAN provider with gateways or private middle miles, you'll have built-in DDoS protection. So SD-WAN provides a number of protections uh, aside from just uh, managing network resiliency. Here's the interesting takeaway. Even if you had a resilient design, you had sufficient internet to continue operating your business, and you had SD-WAN in place, your vendors and business partners may not. A major credit card transaction system was taken offline, leaving their point of sale customers without the ability to accept credit cards. Cell phone service was disrupted as well. We can imagine that many businesses with critical vendors and applications experienced an impact even if they themselves continue to have strong internet service. Now I get that trying to get a handle on whether or not your key business partners have network redundancy and utilize SD-WAN is a bit of a stretch, but identifying the key providers and confirming with them may actually be a new priority element in your business continuity plan. Beyond internet access, what other key services might be exposed to vendor interruption? If voice is critical, we have solutions to protect voice services. Are you using Microsoft Teams for voice or collaboration, for example? What would happen if Microsoft had an issue or you had to quarantine Office 365 because of a cyber event? If you're curious how to protect your environments, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is in the video notes. If you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate a like, a thumbs up, and thank you very much for doing that. And if you want to find your way back to this video channel in the future, the best way of doing that is by hitting the subscribe button. That will put my videos in your feed and allow you to come back here at your convenience. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.